Um, we want to talk about the best leader today, Michael Fernie. Brought to you by 65hurls.com. If you need to get your sticks, go to 65hurls.com. Uh, but it's it's probably, it'd be fairly lazy to think that the leader is simply someone who wears the captain's armband or does all the talking in the dress room. There's a number of things. It's consistency. It's kind of, like I think of, you know, you obviously think of Roy Keane and, you know, players who can almost change the flow of a game on their own. Jeez, I'll never forget one day Roy Keane, it's probably 15 years ago now, he came on from Man United midway through the second half in a game against Villa that they were losing. And just the whole speed of the game seemed to change when he came in. You know, people talk about Javi and, you know, players like that, Pirlo, that the kind of pace of the game is dictated by them. They have such influence. So I think that's kind of what we're talking about when we're defining leader for this particular video. It's somebody who can kind of almost dictate a game. 100% yeah so like when you think of leader you probably think of you know the captain of a team and when you think of captains there's, well, there's a couple of different type of captains there's a lot, there's a captain who talks a lot in the dressing room and maybe doesn't maybe deliver sometimes out in the pitch there's uh, someone who maybe doesn't talk that much on the pitch or off the pitch and then delivers on the pitch the best captain though, or the best leader would be someone who probably marries the two of them he's probably able to motivate off the pitch but also motivate on the pitch and maybe change the course of a game by something they do. Be it having a word with someone, you know, be it putting in a tackle, something. And it's probably a leader as well is probably a bit of cuteness, a bit of cuteness. Uh, maybe when the game is going away, maybe it's going down, maybe it's putting in a big shoulder, maybe it's doing something that just needs to be done to alter the course of the game. I just looked up, just looked up the definition of a leader and it was just the person who leads or commands a group organization or country so they probably command a group they command the occasion and probably command a game as well and they would dictate a game i'd say that's probably what what how you describe a leader yeah and like club and county across the country there are people who fall into that bracket and definitely get your comments into us here whether it's on social media or on the bottom of this particular video who's the first player that's coming to mind across the country when you're thinking about this uh, TJ Reid would be the first one that would come into my mind to be honest with you he's obviously he's obviously been captain but he just consistently like down to particularly the last four or five years he's just he's led from the front nearly every single time he's mm -hmm. never he's never shirking back uh, when things are going bad he's usually the one that's kind of lifting Kilkenny up off the floor when things are going well he's usually the one that's driving forward as well and you know and what well, actually well, now you mentioned him well, but like He's, it's, he's probably been very unfortunate in that he's won an awful lot of All-Irelands, but the two times he's been captain in the All-Ireland Finals, they haven't actually won it. But if you were to go through their entire panel, he, more than anyone else, probably deserves to lift the Liam McCarthy. 100%, and it's so, it would be such a fickle and nonsensical thing for someone to say that he's not a good captain just because they were beaten in finals. It's, it, that's to totally irrelevant. Mm -hmm. But he picks a team up on his back. Uh, the Galway game last year was probably the one that stands out. When things were going wrong for Kilkenny, they were down a couple of men. He caught something like nine puckouts. I think he scored two eleven the same day. So I think in adversity is probably the, when you really, really find your leaders, when things are going wrong. It's much easier. We've all seen the lads who, when things are going well, it's easy to score like 115 or 116 when things are going well and score six or seven from play. But a lot of the time, those players are found wanting when things are going badly. We all know, Shane, we all know those, those types of players. Yeah. Um, thankfully, I could never be accused of that because... Uh, I wouldn't have the skill to be scoring seven or eight points from play, even against the, the worst of opposition. But uh, yeah, I think I think someone who grabs a team by the scruff of the neck, particularly when things are going bad, that's what I think of a leader. I'd probably TJ Reid would probably be symbolic of that for me. I'd say. What's the most you've ever scored in a game, actually? Scored. I remember scoring one seven in a school match under eleven. <laughs> Probably long on. time ago. Yeah. Long, long time ago. What, was, the, um, was the pitch 40 yards long? Yeah, I think you were able to score from a puck out, basically. Um, but yeah, yeah no, it's, it's, I think it. I think it's so. And do you know what? <clears throat> Particularly with someone like TJ Reid, with some of his performances last year, I think he was he was he was man to match in a couple of games last year that he didn't even score in. Like that'll just show you he was getting hooks and blocks and he was winning balls when they needed to be won. Like another thing as well, like you think of a TJ and you think of other guys as well. If you had a puck out and your life depended on the puck out, who would you want to be putting it down on top of? Real, real high pressure. He'd be one guy that would that would definitely kind of stand up. So you kind of have to think in those kind of clutch moments, who's going to lead 
who's going to flourish or who's going to crumble? Yeah, I think above all players in Ireland, he's probably the one lad you'd be thinking, I'll put a puck out on him, we'll probably win it. I actually don't think there's anyone else in the country you'd rather have ahead of him. And maybe some of the viewers will disagree, but I honestly can't think of anyone. Even Johnny Glynn's obviously brilliant in the air, and he's had some, some great moments for Galway. But I'd still rather put it on TJ Reid first and foremost. And see, the thing about that is as well, Shane, about his prowess in the air as well is... Like he's not six foot five. That's not been his thing growing up the whole time. He's about he's about six one or six two. He's brilliant in the air, but he's brilliant on the ball. He's he's re- pretty quick. He's a, a playmaker as well. So he hasn't been a one trick pony or anything like that growing up. So that he's probably if anything he's probably better in the air as a result of that. Um, but yeah, if I was if I one puck out. I mean, life depended on it. And you want to put it down on someone, it'd probably be him because he's a leader and you know what he's going to do with it. Colin Fenley definitely has to be in this bracket too. I, d- I still think we're probably going to agree in the heel of the hunt that TJ Reid is the number one leader for Kikenny. I mean, as he is in so many of these best uh, best videos. Owen Murphy, I think, is probably the only goalkeeper in this list that's going to make it because he is so influential from the back, whether that's those game changing saves that we've seen over the years. I know they lost to Limerick in 2018, but some of the saves he made from Aaron Galan were ridiculous. The 2014 All Ireland, the fact that I would say he was the most defining factor in that, probably over the two games. You know, I, I think some of the saves he made against Tipperary and the fact that he just gets so quick out for the ball, that's, that's a massive, has massive impact for Kenny. Even think last year, the quarter final between Kenny and Cork. For Cork's pockets, and they were causing all sorts of trouble with the movement. He actually started standing 25, 30 yards out of goal to, uh, to kind of block space. And as far as I know, he did that on his, um, you know, on his off his own back. So that's a leader. Yeah, as just well. on that chain as well. The way you've described him there, what's he doing? He's doing something that probably one percent of players would be able to do, or one percent of players would have the competency to do and the talent to do. He's he's just taking the bull by the horns and going doing something himself. I'm sure Brian Cody didn't tell him to come in and do that. He's just leading himself without anybody else telling him to do it. Yeah, and like, do you know last year the way um, Kilkenny had that huge victory against Limerick? Uh, Graham Mulcahy is the guy, the only guy on that Limerick team who I felt in the first 25 minutes when everything was going to pot around him that stood up. So this, and he had obviously a great season all around last year. And if we even jump on into the club situation later in the year, in that first game that was on TV against Napiershik, he absolutely cut them asunder. And this is Napiershik who went on to win the county title. Then 2018, remember we would have talked about it on the Hurland show, I had him down as my hurler of the year. So it seems time and time and again, I'm coming to this conclusion that Graham Mulcahy is the one leading the line for Limerick. Now there are players that are probably more hurled than him but I think he's my number one when it comes to Limerick No uh, f- fair point I suppose with Graham Mulcahy Graham Mulcahy was there in the really really bad times as well mm. but, which no other player when the really strike was on but, back in 2009 yeah, no, only, him and Nick, yeah, only him and Nicky Quaid were the only two players they were there when Justin McCarthy uh, when a lot of lads walked off the panel and it was a makeshift squad that's how his Limerick career started so it would have probably started in adversity so he knows how to stand up probably when, probably when he's needed a point I'll make about Limerick is um, and it's a really good place to be in when we went down through the Limerick team and even the Limerick squad you're not saying I would say that a lot of them don't look like obvious leaders like if you're talking about the elite you know the TJ Reeds of this world but they all lead in their own way um, which is a really really good thing for, for a team to have they're, the sum of their parts they're all leading in their own ways they're not looking for one lad to do one spectacular thing they're looking for a lot of lads to continue doing what they're doing and I think that's a fairly kind of luxurious position for them to be in that they're not looking for you know Kyle Hayes to do something or they're not maybe looking for Aaron Galan to do something they're just looking for everybody to continue doing their jobs and everybody to lead in their own way doesn't Will O'Donoghue definitely stands out a bit as a leader not because he can cut you apart with his hurling I mean there's nothing wrong with his hurling like he, he's a fine hurler but you know compared with we'll say Declan Hannan Dermot Burns Keane Lynch he's not going to cut you apart from 100 yards but he seems to just be able to get on the ball and move it around and burst through lads and put Limerick on the front foot even that league game against Tipperary at the start of 2020 whatever it is he seems to be able to come in and turn a game around 
hundred percent. Kind of, um, he's obviously kind of relatively only starting out his inter county journey. But Nick Fenley was doing those things for Kilkenny, like he was making big turnovers, big hits that could change the course of a game. I'll never forget Fenley's hit on Canning at the start of the second half in the twenty fifteen All Ireland, and it just seemed to almost it was like, okay, this is a different Kilkenny, this is a different half and we're not going to let Galway dictate as we did in the first half kind of just something simple like that and Willow Dunham seems to have a knack of doing that as well a knack of turning over a big ball maybe when it looks like they're going to see the score at one end he turns over a ball all of a sudden it's over the bar at the other end I think he's an obvious one too and I think I think I think he has the potential to dominate and lead for the next five or six years with Limerick just with the nature of his play and how abrasive he is as well those kind of abrasive moments just tend to spur other people into action as well not them yeah and you know when we went through all the teams here we were trying to think is there any guy who sort of leads from the bench because um you know yourself when you're in the team it's easy to talk in the dressing room whether it's effective or not is another thing but it's easy to talk in the dressing room when you're on the bench even if you do have an impact role you can sort of feel like the legs are cut from under you and in terms of being a leader and mouthing it or you know speaking up it can kind of emasculate you a small bit and you feel like what right do i have to sort of tell these lads about setting the tone about you know whatever it might be when i can't get in the team myself now the manager might look at you like that none of the players might look at you like that but that kind of can be how you feel but then you look five six years ago richie power was coming on and changing the game from the bench you know when his knees weren't in great order he was still coming on and changing the game for kilkenny shane dowling now that we mentioned limerick he was probably doing that up until his own knee injury kind of... And with both players, it's probably knee injuries are the reason that they weren't starting in the first place. But there probably aren't too many lads having gone through the list that can lead from the bench. Not really, no. Like, who do you think of? I mean, Billy Byrne would be one that would come back to mind. Just a, a lad that was able to come on and lead and kind of change the course of the game. If you look at Shane Dowlin, Shane Dowlin's last probably... Uh, one of his last plays as, as a Limerick player was to get that outrageous goal that potentially could have turned the game as well. He had the ability to do that. And I suppose that's why uh, that's why probably John Kiley was kind of thinking like if I have this guy that can come on and lead and turn a game, it's massive. And he did. He turned a lot of games. He came on and got a goal in the All Ireland final in eighteen as well. He came on and was massive in the in extra time of the the semi final in eighteen too. So if you have a guy that's going to come on and lead like that, and you know what you're going to get from him, it's massive. I don't think there are that many out there. I would say you know probably Morris Shannon and Waterford to to a much lesser extent to a much lesser extent. But it's a it's a massive feather in the cap for a manager and a team if they do have somebody like that, particularly with hurling and even football as well. How much of a squad game it is now! You need to have leaders coming off off the bench. It's all a grand saying, "Oh, we bring in a couple of nippy lads," but you need to have a couple of lads that are going to lead and maybe be able to change the course of the game, be it winning a free or doing something or getting a pass in or getting a block in or anything like that. So don't think a massive massive amount of them stood out. Definitely not. Dowling was the one, and he's obviously. Uh, since departure from the county squad. I think people will probably question some aspects of the core panel and whether they have leadership. You know, we've gone through them in all these different videos that all, and at times we felt they've come up short in a couple of areas. Pace definitely not being one of them. But leaders, we have found a couple. Like, Patrick Horgan is obviously going to step up. We've seen the amount of scoring he's done consistently over the last few years in particular. Seamus Harn did he'll win you a hard ball and stay going and be brought in an extra time again like he was against Limerick in 2018 in that semi-final even though he was going on one leg uh, maybe Bill Cooper I suppose to another degree but I suppose being a hard worker and being a leader aren't necessarily the same thing he definitely is a hard worker and he sets a tone to some degree whether he's at the same level of what we're talking about the very best leaders in the game maybe the lads in the dressing room will give you a different story and I mean that's that's always that's probably the case in, in most dressing rooms people outside would probably don't know who the lads are that are setting the tone what we're talking about is you know, just the eye test. We look at this team out in the field. Who's the guy who seems to be changing for us? So I think it's pretty obvious that those two guys are, especially Horgan and Harnady, are setting the tone for Cork. Waterford and Clare, we definitely had a problem identifying too many. Like, if you were to go to 2018 for Clare, when they kicked on and got to the All-Ireland semi-final, took that to a replay, there's probably a couple of lads who you could say, yeah, fair enough, though, that lad stood up in, in a couple of games there now. You, you can't ignore that. But in a general sense, maybe that's why they're coming up a little bit short. Clare, don't see too many leaders. Watford, now that maybe uh, Park, or sorry, uh, Philip, Phil Fannin has stepped, or um, 
Philip Mahoney has stepped away. Maybe you can't name too many leaders there. Kevin Moore had massive, massive influence for a number of years. Whether that's going to be the same now, because you know, obviously, once you move into your thirties and move towards your mid thirties, it's harder to keep that up. Those two counties, probably not enough leaders. Yeah, well, I'll say to you, I put it this way: What's Neil Cal's biggest challenge in Waterford is, I think, it's to create new leaders. To mm-hmm. be honest with you, so Kevin Moore is coming to the end of his career. Um, he he dropped Noel Connors off the panel. Brick Walsh retired, and he also dropped Maura Shannon, who I, who I mentioned earlier on. So you've kind of taken the heartbeats of what were the team. They're they're now gone. So he has to rebuild them, and he needs to find a couple of leaders. Um, probably maybe the likes of Connor Prunty, who who is given vice captain and Callum Lyons and probably someone like Jamie Barron maybe and more consistency from, from Austin Gleeson they could be the new leaders but that's kind of yet to be proven yet I think Claire is, is kind of an interesting one as well I think Tony Kelly is a leader uh, at times because when he plays well Claire seem to play well but when he doesn't play well Claire don't seem to play well or so, do Claire have to play well to give him a foundation to actually get the scores yeah, m- maybe possibly so. But when when he does play well, Claire invariably win games. That's I would say that that that's an accurate mm-hmm. enough statement. But is it because but, he's uh, the one that's playing well, or because other lads are actually giving him a platform on which to stick the dagger into teams? Yeah, maybe maybe so too. But the question I'm going to ask is how many games has he played well in that Claire have been beaten in? Uh, and I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not so sure because invariably when they've been beaten, he's been kept somewhat quiet. Now on the flip side of that. Shane O'Donnell has played to me has played some unbelievable games in defeat. Mm. I think you, I think you know maybe what you're going to get with him, whether it's going well for Clare or whether it's not going well for Clare. Um, he tends to always uh, he always is the one I would look to anyway to take the fight to the opposition. Probably along with someone like a, a John Condon when Clare were going really well in eighteen, he was sometimes he had Clare on on his back. But whether that was whether that's happened consistently over the last you know, seven or eight seasons, I, I'm not so sure. To be fair to Tony Kelly, when you're talking about him being a leader, I do think of that league final in, was it 2016, when he got those late scores against Watford to turn that around. To be fair, you have to, you have to give massive credit there. And there have been some games where he's been unbelievable and sort of led the charge on his own. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying he doesn't lead, but if we're to talk about the very top end of this discussion, I don't know, I think... They probably don't win enough games. He doesn't drag them through quite enough games. And you can say, yeah, the sporting cast around him isn't great or whatever. But so often we've talked about, look at what John Milan used to do with Watford, even when they were a fading force around 11 or 12, you know, when the, the golden generation had passed. Look what Owen Kelly did during the mid-2000s when Tip were fairly stink for a lot of it. So that, that's why I won't just give a free pass, you know. An inter- interesting question, Shane, just popped into my head there when you mentioned Milan is one thing because Milan just like people, people just gained energy from him. But a quick question, um, when Tip were going bad and when Galway were going bad, who was a bigger leader, Owen Kelly for Tip or Joe Canning for Galway? Um, define the bad years for Galway. Uh, I would probably define it as before probably... You know, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. When they weren't, you know, at the very, you know, when they weren't in all Ireland finals and around that stage, and you weren't really sure what you were going to get from them for a given day. Like they're consistent enough now. They weren't for a long time. Yeah. Um. Well, two thousand eight. Obviously, when he first came in and had that unbelievable performance against Cork and Thurles. I mean, that was outrageous. So huge leader on a team that wasn't delivered, hadn't delivered. 2009 he got a couple of all-stars that, and he said himself he's quoted um, somewhere as being like maybe some of the all-stars he got a little bit soft and I remember Gerald McNan doing a piece around the time just around 11 or 12 when he was saying that he was probably getting the all-stars too handy but then like in 2012 he was he was unbelievable obviously the the replay against Kilkenny in 2012 didn't work out brilliantly for anyone in Galway and we know he was carrying a knee injury and there was all that palaver about what he had said about do you know the the Kilkenny players going up to the referee in the drawing game and we know all the distraction that came from that but I would say overall like his his it was a bit like the, the Dublin hurlers there for a year it was yo-yo years like he was unbelievable one year then very quiet the next up down whereas I'd say with Kelly and you know accuse me of Tipperary bias if you want when Tipperary were very poor during a lot of that mid stretch of the of the noughties I think he was just outrageous at times, year after year after year probably, not at times, he was outrageous for years there. So I would say if you were just going to go on that alone, 
who was better when their team was down I would say you'd have to say that to or that own Kelly because Tipperary weren't getting to All-Irelands during that stage that Galway team still had a better support and cast or maybe had better better stuff going on on the line so what what do you think? Uh, no I, I think I think at times Tip were probably worse than than Galway were in, in their kind of barren years and I think if you look back through Owen Kelly's uh, career his best hurling was probably done actually during those bad times that was probably his peak during those bad times and uh, he, he, he got the All-Ireland in in 10 obviously and then kind of was was you know easing towards the end of his career but he was phenomenal a phenomenal leader when things were really really bad canning was also and i think that's that's the measure of a man and i think that's the measure of a leader when things are going bad what do you do do you do you stand up and fight it or do you kind of shy away from it i think those two boys definitely stood up and fought it yeah and here here's where i you have to give canning unbelievable credit the 2017 all Ireland semi-final against tipperary the team was the team or the two teams were fairly neck and neck, and he got the last five scores of the game and Galway win. Now he'd had a very forgettable fifty, fifty three minutes, something like that. Then he caught fire towards the end of the game, getting two from play, three from play, and then the rest from freeze. Whichever way it was, it was two and three. I'm not sure. So he was. Just on that shame. One of my mates was like, "Joe needs to go," and I was like. Are you mad? I said he said at a half time. He said that Joe needs to go. Well, he hadn't poked like, the ball to be fair. Like he he really hadn't yeah. poked the ball. But you never you cannot take off a leader. You no, can't take off a leader that has the ability to do that. Like take a team with a scruff of neck and drag him over the line. And then he he basically did. He get the last five scores the last that day. Five, yeah, yeah, and then you know like, what I mean? he set the tone with a couple of early scores against Watford in the final too. So like some people think I seen you know want to be down on Joe Canning all the time or think I've uh, an issue with him or like to hammer him or anything like that. Not at all. I just I like to review players and go on the evidence of what I see. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, sometimes it's unreal. So I think it's just trying to be as honest about it because people give out to you then when you don't call it as you see it. That's a fair point too, I'd say. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, and just on, on when we're talking about you mentioned Canning there about Galway leaders, obviously other guys that would definitely stand out are uh, probably a lad that definitely probably doesn't lead with his words and leads with his actions is someone is someone like Dahi Burke who makes you know clutch catches when they need to be made, who will kill a lad to stop him coming in around the goals, who will get in a big shoulder, who will quieten one of the opposition's best players. David Burke was obviously captain when they made the breakthrough in twenty seventeen and. While he can be brilliant on the pitch and, and hit three or four points in certain games, he's he was obviously very good behind the scenes as well. It was obviously very good at keeping them as a cohesive unit and, and leading from behind. Uh, as regards uh, leading on the pitch, Conor Whelan would, would definitely be another one who just always delivers. Um, even the league game earlier on this year against Limerick, I think he scored four points and they, were, they weren't going well. Horik Mannion is the one that's always driving forward from defence, I would say, too. He was so, my hurler like, the year in 2017. Yeah, like they've got they've got plenty of leaders there away from Joe, and I think a lot of the time when Galway were going poor, it was just Joe. You yeah. know what I mean? It was only him, and now they have a good support and cast and lads that can kind of share the load of it as well, which obviously makes his job a lot easier. That's that's why he's flourished realistically in recent years because there's not as much pressure on, and he can lead in a different type of way than he had to maybe for the previous decade. And had Galway won the All Ireland in twenty eighteen? It would have also been Joe Canning and Porrick Mannion who would have been two lads in the conversation for Hurler of the Year. That'll tell you how important they were uh, to that particular run of the team. Dublin, they probably have a couple of leaders, all right. Chris Crummy, I, I would definitely put in that bracket. I think Conal Keeney would have to be in there. Liam Rush, if he could stay fit, like because his influence is always huge when he's on the field and when he's able to move. Uh, Owen O'Donnell as well, the way he drives out from the back. So that'll be a few from them. Wexford, so we've talked about in, like let's say, the best skills, you know, the ball striker, couple of different areas. We've kind of decided that Wexford probably aren't at the top end of that. But what they do have is an awful lot of heart in the team. And just because you might be the tastiest in the world, it doesn't mean that you don't have a few a few leaders who have influence on the field. Like definitely Lee Chin takes an awful lot of boxes in what we're talking. He would be a leader. I think Matt O'Hanlon would because he's always happy to man mark the best guy and sometimes drive him in the opposite direction and get a score or two himself. Um, would you say Jack O'Connor? I think if Jack O'Connor could stay away from red cards, I think there's very little he can't do. He's got all the skill, he's got the speed, power, he even takes freeze. I think he could be up there with some of the best players in the country if um, if he could avoid red cards. There's a lot of potential there. There definitely is a lot of potential. There's very little that he doesn't have. 
So there's definitely a lot of potential if he can get his uh, get his discipline right. But at, at the moment, I would definitely say someone like Ali Chin, you know, when they beat when they beat Kilkenny in that 2017 uh, Leinster semi final down in Wexford Park, when we you know catches were there to be made and scores were there to be got, he was the one that was standing up. Then like. I mean, I think of that Leinster final that year, even when things weren't going that well for Wexford, you had Matt O'Hanlon driving them forward and putting, you know, Joe Canning, Galway's best player, on the back foot. I think someone like Aline Ryan is another one who can deliver with actions with, you know, big shoulders, big collisions. Um, obviously, you know, we go back to the point he got against Tip last year in the semi final as well, kind of inspirational, kind of a score too. Uh, they've they've got it, and they have other guys that are. They, they, David O'Keefe is, you know, a leader in his own way, as is Liam Old McGovern, as is someone like Jack O'Connor. So they've got an awful lot of potential. That's why you'd have to say, like, you know, Waterford would only love to be in the, the position leader-wise that, that Wexford are. They've got loads of guys that can step up on, on a given day. Just um, looking at a couple of other counties, like, from what the, the few times I've seen Kerry in action, like Shane Conway, not, not only is he their best player, but he's their heartbeat. Like, they, he's the go to guy. He's the, when they want something, uh, when they need something done or want something done in a game, he's the one they trust to go and do it, be it a free, uh, scoring a free, be it getting something from play, be it winning a free. He's the one that they would trust. And I think Marty Mouse Cavanaugh would come into that kind of bracket with Carlo as well. I've seen Carlo win games, uh, win tight games against Offaly when he was outstanding. I've seen them lose uh, qualifier games and, le- and uh, league games and even Leinster round robin games where they could have been beaten by 10 or 12 points. And he was still the one that was fighting the fight for Carlo. He was still the one that was, you know, given an A out of 10 despite probably being closely marked for the opposition so they're probably two of the leaders maybe of, of two of the weaker counties and someone like someone like Willie Dunphy maybe might be an obvious one for Leash Paddy Person would probably be maybe a more obvious one but like even against Dublin last year Willie Dunphy took took you know a couple of balls with a scruff of neck and threw them over the bar when they needed kind of an abrasive type of a type of a character as well some some I don't know fans just tend to gravitate towards certain lads when he gets a score it's it's worth a little bit more to leash so Willie Dunphy would probably be the one that would stand out it'd be interesting to hear particularly from Carlo Carlo Leash and, and Kerry people is there anybody else maybe that that were missing a real influential character would they kind of be the ones that would stand out for me yeah and Neil McMahon of course in Antrim as well and definitely let us know if there's anyone else we're missing there I think like you mentioned Mouse Kavanagh there for Carlo and I think of that that run with um, St Mullins in the 2019 Leinster campaign very good against us for Kula very very good against Rat Downey Earl and very good against Ballyhale in the final when you know they gave a very credible performance but they're always kept a little bit at arm's length and you would imagine that an awful lot of the plan for Ballyhale beforehand was shut down Mouse Cavanagh and will win this game, and he still managed to have an influence. So you can't ignore that. I think we've we've most teams actually uh, talked about at this stage, but we haven't actually brought up Tipperary, because I suppose I'm trying to not just go on about Tipperary. As all Ireland champions, are bound to have plenty of leaders. Yeah, um, yeah. You don't like waxing lyrical about Tipperary. You don't like being goblins for Liam Sheedy at all. No, definitely not. A um, couple of guys that would stand out for me. Um, we mentioned about Owen O'Donnell with Tipperary bursting out with balls. I think when Cottle Barrett bursts out with a ball like that, it has it has a similar effect. It kind of it can lift the tide and tip. I think Potty Matters a really a really obvious one, probably the most obvious one. Be it catching a puck out, be it doing that swimming thing when he gets the ball and you know gets a free and throws the hands up in the air and a fist pump and yeah the old front crawl or a bit of freestyle. Um, he just he he does lift a crowd. He lifts he lifts a team as well. Interesting one on Potty. When he's quiet, I think Tip are often very quiet as well. When he's nullified, I think Tip could, are often in trouble. Uh, case in point would probably be the Munster final last year when he was kind of ran ragged and Limerick really had a good go at him and got a lot of joy and Tip struggled as a result of that as well. So like with the leader, you know the, the saying about hammer and the hammer, like some teams would avoid the hammer, um, other teams would go straight for it. Limerick went straight for him last year and tried to take him out of the game, and they did. But you can't, I've said it before, you can count on one hand the amount of bad games he's had for Tipperary over the years. I remember saying that in a, on a show with you, I think it was recently, and one that fella tried to name out on one hand the three or four, but you're kind of struggling after three or four. When he's good, Tipperary are good. He's such a, you know, he's such a formidable defender, and he can be. He can always be, you know, he's like Michael Chang, you know, the tennis player back in the day. Mm. He's uh, I am the wall, like 
Maher puts up this wall and it's impenetrable when he's on top form. Yeah, I, I think it's a symptom of how well Tipperary are set up if he goes well or not. So like 17, 18, he probably wouldn't have had massively influential performances and he was captain at that point, so I know that would have hurt him. But like the Munster final of 2019, Tipperary, I don't, they hadn't found their starting 15 at that point. They were still searching for the team, still probably learning the hard way and they certainly did in that Munster final. And he was pulled out the field and he was chasing after, you know, was it Groat Hegarty, I think, a couple of times. It could have been different members of the half-forward line. When Tipperary are set up well, it, it means that the forwards are chasing hard and the ball is coming down almost 50-50 on top of him. And you're going to struggle against him in a 50-50 scenario. We saw the 2016 All-Ireland Final. Like he was very, very dominant and very unlucky not to be hurler the year that year. I think snapped that ball over Wally Welch and threw, threw it over from midfield. You know, that sort of thing that sets the tone. So he's very much a leader. Um, I'm not going to mention Brendan Maher because I'll be accused of bias again. Um, I definitely name Shane. Just, just, on Brendan, just on Brendan Maher, I, I'd gladly bring him, up, bring him up because that in the Munster final last year, like he, he just he took a ball out of nowhere and put it over the bar, inspirational score. He also, you know, quelled the threat of you know, Bally Gunner is probably best player in in Park Manny. Then you have the point with with half or hurling the All Ireland semi final. Like you're do, doing things that a, that. A, probably a mere mortal couldn't do and a normal player couldn't do then you have he was ice cool on the freeze the whole way throughout the year as well like TJ Reid is, is right up there for me as well because as well you're taking the pressure no more than Brendan Matter was taking the pressure with Boris Lee last year the pressure is all on the, the free taker and if you can lead and have a high percentage from your freeze it's a massive massive thing for your team plus like when TJ steps up to free, you can anybody know that they don't even need to look at look at it. They're exactly. just ready for the next. Yeah, you can chalk it down. Same, same with Brendan Matter. Um, I think probably Shami Callan is is the other one that would definitely stand out. Like if you're looking at it, Tipperary captain last year, he scores a goal in every championship game, and like that, as I said, a leader. You know what you're going to get from him or her, whoever it is, on a given day. You know they're going to deliver a certain level of performance. Some days it'll be a bit higher than maybe that 7.5. Some days it'll be a little bit lower. But they're going to be unbelievably consistent. And that's why that's why Callan was that. And he was could have been hurler the year in 14, should have been hurler the year in 16, and was hurler the year last year. Like that's unbelievably unbelievable consistency. And uh, that like that's that's what a, that's what a leader is to me. Yeah, and he was nominated in 15 as well. Four nominations. Like I think it's three for TJ Reid. Um, Richie Hogan would have had two or three there as well along with winning it so actually coming down and picking your number one is really really difficult I almost feel like I'm not fully decided at this point do you know who your number one is? Ah uh, yeah I, kinda, I said him at the start and I, and, I, and I stick with it because I just think I just think TJ is on a different planet when you take in the county level and the club level just like when was the last game bad game he had I can't I can't I can't really remember when was the last I don't think you've ever been able to say in the last seven or eight years that he didn't deliver when when they needed him most or he was under under par when they needed him most. Uh, he's he is their go to player. He's the, the one that kinda of conducts the orchestra for them. Uh Colin Fenley probably a close second with Kilkenny and Bally Hale. But uh, it would be TJ Reid for me. You know you know what he's gonna get. And like at at thirty three years of age, he's actually becoming a better player and if anything he's more important and more of a leader now than he was at any stage over the last decade mm. I'd, I'd have Park Manning very high up on the list here I would have Brendan Maher for the reasons that you said which are it obviously it definitely does sound like bias when I say it at this point because I've brought him up in so many different uh, videos at this point TJ Reid is hard to ignore though I think he is yeah and yeah I probably can't ignore him probably going to have to go with him as well so I think we're it's rare enough for us, but we actually agree on something. Yeah, I don't think we've agreed on anything or any people so far, no. But I just think, like, if you had, as I said, if you had a puck out and you wanted someone to win it, who would you want under it? If you had a free and you wanted someone to nail it, who would you want hitting it? If you could take any one player in Ireland and think, I can build a team around this guy, not only is he a brilliant player, he's, he, he can catch ball, he can hit frees, he can bring other people into game, he's a file for other guys. I just think it's the total package and probably leader is probably the best way to, to describe him because it complements him in, in every way, every kind of facet of his game. Okay, so that's it. That's our best leader, most influential players, TJ Reid. Let us know if you have any uh, opinions that are contrary to what we said or if there's anything we've left out. Brought to you by 65 Hurls. If you need any sticks, go to 65hurls.com. Thanks very much, Michael. Thanks a million, Shane.